Hey everybody, welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 46. Now I know at the end of the last tutorial I had said that we would be implementing uh, loading textures in in this tutorial for the 3D file that we load in. However, uh, I really wanted to uh, change a couple of things first and just do some general cleanup before we do that because currently our model class has a lot of stuff in it that isn't necessarily for the model, uh, such as moving and all of this, we should really have a game object class to separate this. And then also, uh, in the last tutorial, I don't know why I didn't pick up on this, but I'm, I'm using a shared pointer for the stride and the vertex buffer. And really, there's no reason to use a pointer at all here. Uh, we can just use an, a uint. And we will initialize this to be the size of uh, whatever our data type is. Now, if we go down to the uh, stride and stride pointer, we can just return the stride and we can return the address to the stride. Lastly, if we go down where we are initializing it, we don't have to initialize the stride like that. We can just take that out because we are now initializing it at the very top right here. A couple of other things I want to change uh, for the vertex buffer and the index buffer is I had this buffer size uh, function and I think it's a little bit ambiguous what it actually is. I'm um, going to modify for the current document. I'm going to change it from buffer size to vertex count because that's really what this is. And then for the function, I'll capitalize it. And then down here where we are initializing, let's update that uh, argument that is for the vertex count and where that is used. And then instead of size of T, just put stride here, it's the same thing. All right, and that should be all the changes for the vertex buffer. So let's go to the index buffer. And similarly, where we have uh, the buffer size, I want to change this to the index count. Because that's really what it is. It is the index count. And then I'll change the new function name to index count with a capital I. Change the argument instead of number of indices to index count. It's the same thing, but just keep it consistent. And we will also have to change down in the current model CPP where we are drawing because we were calling uh, buffer size, or I guess in the mesh, we will have to change it to call index count instead of buffer size here. Let's make sure this still compiles and then we will look into adding in a game object class. All right, that still compiles. So more importantly, we have a bunch of stuff in our model class that isn't necessarily tied to the model, but more so it's tied to the game object that will have this model. So let's create a new header. This is going to be for our game object class. We're going to call it game object. And let's also create a new CPP file. And this will also be called game object. First thing first, let's go ahead and include our game object header. Let's go to show all files and drag uh, this new CPP and header up to our graphics folder. All right, I'm going to uncheck show all files. Now up in our game object header, let's include the model header because our game object will have um, a model tied to it. Now down in our model header, there are a few things that we are going to remove. So let's see. Let's actually just copy everything we have in our model and go to the game object class and paste it. And let's look at what our game object should not have. So we won't need to store anything like the device, device context, the constant buffer, or the texture because that's all a part of the model or just the model needs that. We won't need the actual mesh processing and model loading. What we will need 
is an actual model tied to the game object. So we'll add a new object for that model. We won't need um, a set texture. We're going to keep the same initialize arguments so that these can be passed to the uh, model when we actually initialize it for this game object. And for our draw, yeah, it's going to have the same arguments. So that's fine. Now let's uh, go to the model header and let's remove everything that we won't need specifically for our model. So we won't need the store the position or rotation or anything like that or the world matrix because that's all a part of the individual game object. We won't need this update world matrix function. We won't need any of the forward, uh, you know, any of the position or rotation data. So we can just take out those functions. We are still going to need draw, and uh, we will just keep the set texture. We will keep this set up for now. So let's go down to the um, actual functions in the CPP, or the definitions. And we are just going to copy everything here and work on the merge to the game object uh, class. So first, since this is in the game object, this is for the game object class, not for the model class, let's do a replace. We're going to replace model with game object, just for this document. We'll do that replace. Next, let's look at things we won't need. So we won't need um, this stuff where we are loading the model. Instead, we are just going to call model.initialize and pass in these arguments. So we'll do if the model initializes, pass in these arguments. So we'll say if it fails to initialize, we will return false. Otherwise, we're going to set up the position, rotation, world matrix, and return true for this game object. We're not going to need set texture, that's a part of the model. Uh, when we draw, all that we are going to do is we're going to call model.draw and pass in the view projection matrix and we're going to change something about this um, I guess we should go ahead and do it so before we had a world matrix tied to our model and that had like the position and rotation and all of that however now our world matrix will be a part of the game object so we're going to have to pass in the world matrix to our model when we draw it and that way, the model will know, you know, where to draw it. So we need to update the model draw function to take in uh, the world matrix. So let's go to the model header. And for the draw, I'm just going to copy this. This will be the world matrix. Now let's go down to uh, the draw function. Add that in. World matrix. And instead of using uh, the world matrix that was previously a part of the model class, we will just use the one that gets passed as an argument. Now let's go back to the game object CPP. Uh, we don't need any of the model loading stuff, so we'll take out uh, load model, process node, process mesh. What else was there? Take those out. And let's see, this is all just stuff for our game object so that can stay. And that looks good. So now let's go to our model CPP and remove the uh, functions that no longer apply. For example, setting position and rotation and updating world matrix. Um, we don't need any of these position or rotation functions, all the ones that are underlined. So we'll just take those out. And I believe that is about, I believe we're about done here. Next, we need to go up to our graphics header. Currently, we were storing uh, a model right here. We're just going to change this to be a game object. And let's find everywhere that we were using uh, that model and change that. Oh, I need to change the include. We need to include the game object header. All right, let's see. We don't need to change these. Okay, here we go. When we adjust the rotation, because we are rotating this object constantly, 
uh, change it to be the game object. And when we initialize, set it to be the game object. And when we draw, this is when we're drawing from the render frame function and the graphics. And I think that's it. So let's test this out. Make sure this still runs. I know this is a kind of boring tutorial. We're not covering anything new, but just doing some restructuring. But I just want to do this before we implement texture loading because there's a bit of code for the texture loading and I didn't want it to just be a big mess. So yeah, it all still works fine. Um, in the next tutorial, we are definitely going to load textures. There's a few different ways the textures can be stored. They can be embedded or they can be uh, outside of the actual 3D file. So we will cover both of those.